his ace 10 off suit. English, por favor. I think he's raising. He is. Correct. 175,000. Action folded to Eugene in the small blind. He's got ace king. He's out of position. He may want a three bet. 175. He may be sweating the fact that the original raise came from under the gun. He decides to call. He might also not want to take a race at this stage of the tournament, even though we know he's got Mestre dominated. Kostic has given up the big blind, so we will go heads up to the flop. Kachilov, a commanding favorite. The flop gives Kachilov top pair, gives Mestre second pair. Very bad flop for Raul Mestre. And Kachilov donks. Very rare donk from Eugene. It's almost as if he wants to try to get Mestre to freak out here. We know Mestre's behind, but in general, I don't think he can just fold outright in this spot. Mestre calls for 250,000. He's known as the Quiet Storm, but I think Eugene may have to have a new nickname, and I'm thinking Dr. Strange, because this is just some strange stuff that's going on, both pre-flop and on the flop. He's doing it really quietly. What are you talking about? It's quietly He's silent. Strange. He's silent as he's doing weird things. Maybe <laughs> he's a quiet, weird storm. He's like a hurricane in northern Canada or we, something. We could call him Stranger Things. I like that. Well, that's copyrighted, so don't do that. Right. Uh, so, but Dr. Strange is fine, by the let's way. Let's discuss pre-flop just for a second, okay. because Mestre is open. We're six or seven seven-handed is pretty normal. Eugene's in the small blind. It is a decision because he has about 37 blinds. He can go either way. And by that, I mean calling or raising. He can't fold. That would be absurd. Of course. Usually people are going to raise here, right? I mean, this is a really good time to raise. The only reasons not to raise, I think 37 blinds is a fine chip stack to get it in with too. Mestre is under the gun and he is a bit of a psycho. So he's going to be opening a wider range pre-flop, which means maybe he's just going to fold too much and we're yeah. concerned about that. Number one. Number two, he's also going to blast off a lot post-flop. So maybe we want to give him a chance. That's all I got. I mean, that along with potential variance mitigation because Eugene might rightly think that he's the best player at the table yeah. and not want to get into a pre-flop war when he doesn't really have to. He can play well post-flop. He can figure that out. Mestre's never going to put on an ace-king either, no. so that's good. That's pretty nice. So let's talk about the weirder thing, though, is yeah. when Eugene donks the flop, mostly people don't donk in heads-up pots. Yeah, especially against the under-the-gun Razor on a King-10-3 board. You kind of never see this with good reason, because this usually smashes the under-the-gun's range, King and a 10 up there. I mean, wow, he's supposed to have a much better hand. Well, his range is much stronger anyway than Eugene's, so he's going to have a much better hand more of the time anyway. It's weird to donk top pair, one, because you block with good hands. You block yeah. aces, which is good, but you block the other ace-kings, you block some kings, there shouldn't be that much in theory for Mestre to call you with, except we make it cheap enough, I guess, he can call with some of the gut shots as well as pairs. Well, I think what Eugene is thinking is not from this theoretical perspective, from but from this I'm playing against Raul Mestre perspective. Yeah. He's played against this guy for a while now, for sure, and we've seen Raul Mestre before, and what he did when we saw him before was float with queen high on an ace-10 deuce board. When he got check raised. <laughs> yeah, so Eugene might know stuff like this about Mestre and know that Mestre doesn't really believe weird, out of position, aggressive actions, and decides, okay, I wanna make sure a bet goes in. Mestre might even raise me here when I bet because yeah. he just won't believe me. It's weird for me to show up with ace-king. I'm just confusing the crap out of the audience and Raul Mestre at the same time. I mean, I think that is what's going on. Eugene's like, he's never gonna have me on a hand like ace-king, and I'm gonna do another weird thing. He just will have no sense of at all of what kind of hand I have or what I can have here. Right, but for this to be a good play, Eugene has to know that Mestre has some random floats in him, like right. eight high floats and other floats that are really no equity floats. Otherwise, this is bad because you would think, and you made this point in the podcast a lot, that Mestre would usually bet this board whether oh, yeah. he has it or not, so a bet should go in. So for this to be okay, Eugene has to expect some floats and some raises from Mestre. The other thing that's good about this donk is if we're going to play this hand so often, if we call a flop bet, it might go check, check on the turn, we bet the river he might call. If we bet the flop, we can bet the turn and bet the river and make sure three streets go in when we have a hand this strong, which is pretty great if we're Eugene. Yeah, that might be the plan. It might not be. Yeah. The turn is a three, which seemingly changes nothing. And now Kachilov checks. Eugene's playing this hand very strangely. I think a general master's best move would be to check behind. 
Instead, he bets 600,000. Eugene's taking a really weird line in this hand, but if he was trying to get Master to freak out on the flop, this three ball hitting the turn really shouldn't change much. Kachilov has picked up a stack of black. He had some orange to the mix and check raises for 1.45 million. Yep, there's the raise. I'm not sure he'll get the action he wants, however. I'm all in. Oh, yes, he has. A quick call. I can't say that Eugene's played this hand by the book in any way, but I'm willing to give him credit for being an absolute genius, conning Mester like the Spanish prisoner. And Mestre now drawing to a 10. Just masterful. It's a 7, so Eugene Kachilov doubles up again. I thought Eugene would be handcuffed by his lack of chips, but that's not really a problem anymore now, is it? Okay, we'll get to the turn, but we got to talk about that river. It's so crazy, it was a 7. It was a 7, oh yeah. my god. No, but yeah. the turn, obviously. Very interesting stuff going on. What's Eugene doing? This is so weird. I mean, if these guys were on a railroad, I'd say it was strangers on a train. Man, you wrong? are just loving this. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, Dr. Strangelove would be called yeah. to, to operate on this hand. Okay. Necessary. So one thing that you posited when Eugene donked the flop was he's going for three streets. He's trying to go bet, bet, bet. Yeah. That's not what happened. No. He checked. What? That means that Eugene really believes that Raul Mestre has a lot of floats in him, and those floats certainly have to take a stab once Eugene checks. Right. I mean, betting, again, is pretty strong. But yeah, we're thinking Mestre has hands like ace jack, ace queen, and maybe some really random floats like eight nine suited, yeah. seven six suited, stuff like that as well. We need all of that stuff in there. Right, we do. And I think Eugene must believe that or else he wouldn't play it this way. Mestre betting is the next question. Yeah. So we went into a big argument on our podcast, which you should check out there were because throws. we're not going to go through everything that we said no. about whether or not it's okay to bet here as Mestre. Joe Stapleton advocates for a check. I'm a little bit more on the check side. We, d we talked about it, betting is okay in my mind now. I like betting more than checking, but the really quick reason from my point of view is we can bet, we can check back the river anyway, so we can set the price. So that's actually to me a better form of pot control than letting Eugene set the price on the river. The, the problem is we kill some of the bluffs rather than keep right. them alive that might bluff the river. Right, if Eugene has some sort of gut shot here, like Jack-9 suited potentially, something right. like that, he's going to give up if we bet here. And he's going to take a stab on the river probably. So we miss out on that equity. That's part of my reasoning. That's we right. also avoid getting check raised. That was, a big, <laughs> that was a big part of my reasoning as well. That's true, but I would assume if we get check raised, we can just fold. So it's sort of like calling a bet on the river anyway. Right. That would be my thought with this hand specifically. Well, there are some hands we would not be able to fold. What right? happened on the podcast is we both came a little bit more towards the middle. We both yeah. agree the bet is okay at least. Right. But if we're going to bet we think the size is too big here for sure raul is betting almost two-thirds of the pot and that seems way too big because if you're going to bet part of this has to be for value it can't be just pure protection against draws or else it doesn't matter what your hand is it right. doesn't matter that you have a 10 right because you're just trying to get eugene to fold so who cares it's not like we have any blockers to anything anyway so in the end we need to bet smaller so eugene can consider doing something with his draws and we can get value from them it's fine to bet 350 375 400 000, something like that by the way, that also includes that pot control concept much more so, right? We lose less if we get check raised. We can check it back on, on unimproved rivers. It seems so much better, but 600,000, Right, well, let's get to the more interesting thing, I think, okay. which is Eugene check raising. Is this okay? I mean, it works out, obviously, but is this okay? If this was the evening, I would say this was strangers in the night, <laughs> man, because it is odd. It's a really odd decision by Eugene. All I can say is this is the third decision, which is really non-standard by him. Yeah. And this, and this one hand, the problem I would have if I was Eugene, we know what happens, but I'd be really concerned about ever getting action from worse hands by making this play. Right. We kind of expect, as Eugene, at least I would, that if Mestre has a hand like Ace-10, that's in his bet folding range. Right. Especially once he bets so big, right? Yeah. So the hands we're expecting to get action from, maybe Queen-Jack, something like that. Maybe a king, a worse king, king-queen, king-jack, yeah. something like that. We're hoping to get more action from those hands, and that must be the plan. But is that good enough? I'm really concerned that it's not, actually. Like, we check-raise here. It's admittedly really fishy, the three pairs. We're not really supposed to be able to have a three unless mm -hmm. we have quads as Eugene. We don't really have any other threes in our range, right? So the check-raise here is really weird, and I can understand from Mestre's point of view, you're like, 
what is this guy even supposed to have? Yeah. Because I don't know what Eugene's supposed to have either here really for value. It doesn't make any sense to me. Right. But which is why I think it works. Once we're here though, as Mestre, right. it's a weird spot. We're probably a little confused. You can actually see it on Mestre's face when he's contemplating what to do. I think it's still just time to fold. I don't think we can move in here, even though it doesn't make any sense to us. It just seems like we're blowing our chips away. It's too much. I mean, if we think that Eugene can't really have most kings, maybe can, and, and it's hard for him to have ace king, and he wouldn't do this with worse kings. Well, There's we, only, we think, but we th it, he course. plays weird, of course. Understood. But yeah. I'm saying, if we're in Master A's shoes, we're thinking that. We think there's one combo of pocket tens and one combo of pocket threes. There's not too many king ten suited. We don't know if he'd call with that preflop anyway. You might just think, what is he supposed to have here? So like, he's just check raising with air? Check raising with queen jack? I guess. It, I mean, the other thing is when Eugene makes it 900,000 more, 800,000 more, he's effectively moving in. Yeah, it's right? not it's not a move in by Mestre, it's more of a call off. Right. And I think when Mestre makes this face after he gets called and sees Eugene's hand, I think that must be he expected queen jack. Well, I mean, I think both of them thought they were in different shape. Once you, once Mestre moves in, look at Eugene's face as he calls it off. He's not thrilled because he's really only supposed to be getting this kind of action from hands well, that are beating him. I've seen Eugene play a fair amount, and it might just be that he doesn't like putting all of his chips in during a tournament. Okay. He kind of has that vibe of, like, I don't ever like my tournament being on the line. Maybe. So that could be what's going on there. Either way, very strangely played hand from Eugene. I think Mestre probably overvalued his, his situation a little bit. Didn't necessarily have to put that many chips in. But... Upon our first inspection, we both thought it was horrible. Talked about it for a bit. It's not that bad once you kind of figure out what Eugene's doing is unique and different right. and weird and you don't expect it. I mean, Eugene sort of ultimately puts Mestre in the upside down. Right. right. I mean, he's shown him all these weird fishy lines, one big fishy line, really. And it confuses Mestre and he thinks, I don't, can't think of a hand this guy's really supposed to have that, for value that he's doing this with. So I move in. It's not crazy to move in there, but... Probably he didn't have to blow a half a stack on his hand. Probably not. And this might be why Eugene had so much success for so long against really good players. You have to play differently than other players to have continued success against the top echelon. And Eugene clearly plays differently. Yep. Poker guys had a disagreement. Do you disagree as well? Or do you agree with one or both of us? Or just in general, what are your thoughts on the decisions Eugene and Raul make in this hand? Let us know in the comments. We're going to respond to our favorite ones right up here. If there's nothing to click on, by now you should know, that means it's coming soon. Now, Eugene took a weird line in that hand, right? And he's also very successful. Yeah. Fabrice Solier is also a very successful poker player. We think. we we Pretty successful, at least. He <laughs> was on TV a lot for a while. There's he had that. that going for him. He's and he, French. He took a really weird line in a hand we did a couple weeks ago called Mad Men or Genius. Click right up there to check that out. Mad Men or Genius? Mad Men. Don Draper's in the hand as well. Don Draper is not in the hand. That's a lie. Okay. Yeah. We also, of course, have our podcast, which Grant referred to in this in this video where we went into crazy, crazy depth and excruciating detail, arguing about should Mestre bet the turn? How much should he bet? What do we think about these, this line and these different decisions Eugene is making as well? You wanna check that out. It's called The Breakdown presented by the Poker Guys. And of course, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.